I was asked about how I made the uh, complex uh, path for these veins to follow. You'll notice that from the top they are simply a smooth radius, but from the side they are what you might call an OG shape, sweeping up and over and then actually sweeping down on the end to make a nice curve. Um, I needed a, a 3D, three-dimensional uh, path uh, for uh, my sketch to be uh, extruded along or swept along, uh, depending on the language that you use. I'm using FreeCAD version 20.2. Uh, this is, I think, the latest stable version. Um, it's uh, constantly being upgraded, so uh, that, that may have changed by the time you look at this. So a couple of different things going on here. One is um, I could simply uh, make a nice, simple uh, radial uh, shape here and extrude and then make a shape to cut this shape out. That would be a possibility. Um, that would work. Uh, it would work reasonably well. Um, the thing that uh, wouldn't work as well is that uh, it would uh, leave me a shape that FreeCAD doesn't easily um, want to, d to apply uh, bevels to uh, or, or fillets to. Uh, so I want this nice curved fillet on top. Uh, and uh, is there a way to do that uh, all in one? Well, to do that, I need to be able to make a complex sweep. Basically, I need a, a shape, a, a sketch, that contains this cross section, this, this up and down cross section with the curved top. I need that shape, and I need to sweep it along a path that starts down here, comes up here, and goes over here, all while twisting uh, to the left. So how do you do that? Uh, I'm going to turn this impeller off and I'm going to go to a different uh, part here, uh, just my test part. I'm going to create, um, uh, sorry, let me uh, get rid of that. Uh, I'm going to go to a, a, a test part here uh, and create a body for it to go in and I need to create my shapes that contain uh, the uh, different planes of that complex suite that I need. So first I'm going to create a shape on the, or a sketch on the uh, uh, XY plane, on the uh, bottom plane. Um, I know that I want these veins to come out and terminate at the radius of a certain circle. Uh, so, easiest way to do that is to change this over to construction geometry and put in the circle that I'm going to be using that represents the base of this project. So I'm going to click on it, I'm going to dimension it, and I could simply type in a number here. Um, I'm actually going to use, I've got uh, this uh, uh, all set up with parameters. Uh, so I'm going to uh, put in uh, my base diameter and let it use that. So uh, I'll show you that here in a second. So there's my base circle. Um, now I want to put an uh, arc that begins in the origin and sweeps over uh, uh, counterclockwise and ends at this uh, diameter. I want that to be a certain radius, so let me radius it. I'm going to hit equal so I can pull up my, my uh, formula and put in my spreadsheet, and this is called blade radius. Okay, and these numbers, of course, you could make them whatever you want. In fact, that's the whole point of putting it into a spreadsheet is that I can change uh, these parameters and it will automatically recalculate the whole thing. Close that. Uh, let me just show you the spreadsheet here momentarily. Here's the spreadsheet that has all of these um, different uh, values in it. Some of these are parameters that I've directly entered. So here's the blade radius. 
a 60 uh, uh, millimeter blade radius. That's simply a number I've entered. I've given it the alias blade R so that I can look it up in a formula. There are some other uh, parameters here that are calculated. Uh, and I'll mention those here in just a second, but let me call your attention especially to blade final X, blade final Y, uh, blade final angle. Um, those will be uh, relevant here in a moment. Okay, back to my sketch. Let me make another sketch that contains uh, the uh, uh, OG shape, for I don't know what else to call it. Uh, so I'm going to put that uh, here on the YZ plane and I'm going to use my polyline tool. What I want is something that begins at a fairly low point and then it curves up. Now with the polyline tool you can hit M to get different connections to the previous point. I want a curve here. So I want this to curve up to a certain place. Now I want another curve. I'm going to hit M again and curve this way and I want a line that should be a horizontal line but it's coming out tangent to my curve. That's fine. I'll fix it here in a minute. So I want it to come out for a certain distance and finally I want a final curve downward to represent the end of the blade. I'm going to right click to close this off. Click on this part tell it I want that to be horizontal. Okay, that looks better. This radius I want to end at the same point as the center. In other words, I want it to be a 90 degree curve. The fact that it's tangent from here to here and that this is horizontal means that these are uh, starting in the same vertical position, but I want it to end in the same, try that again, end in the same horizontal plane. Okay, that gives me a radius that is curved nicely around there. I want that radius to be uh, the same as the uh, uh, blade, uh, the top of the blade that I'm going to have radius with a fillet. So I'm going to put in a radius and uh, again I'm going to do this with the spreadsheet. Uh, this is uh, the blade thickness divided by two and there's my little tiny radius there. Okay, this radius um, I went ahead and did as a, a parameter as well. Uh, so let me put that in. Uh, it is nowhere near uh, 19 uh, millimeters. Uh, that is SS blade uh, transition fillet radius. You know, you have to come up with some kind of name that you can remember. Okay. So I arbitrarily made that four millimeters. Now I can tell my sketch here is way oversized, so I'm going to bring it down here so it's a little bit more in scale before I start doing too many other dimensions. The start of the blade is going to be uh, a, a dimension here that I have labeled uh, as the blade inner height. Uh, so spreadsheet blade inner height. I set that to 10. Again, these are all just numbers that I came up with. The uh, height that it gets to when it reaches the top of its uh, travel uh, is probably not to anybody's surprise. The blade outer height. Okay. When should that transition happen? When should the sweep begin? Well, this section, this uh, first horizontal section, uh, I have called the blade inner uh, radius. And the place where it begins to transition up to the final, or I could guess I could make it the place where it reaches the final, um, is uh, I've called it the blade outer radius. So I'm going to go from here to here. Try that again. From here to here. And I want that to be um, blade outer 
radius. Okay. I want this to uh, end here uh, at uh, the uh, radius of the impeller. So from here to here, I want that to be, let me try that again here, from here to here. I want it to be um, the uh, blade, the uh, uh, base radius. Um, I actually, when I did this uh, in the actual project, I tweaked that number just a little bit to get just exactly the right uh, results, but uh, I'll make it simple and just leave it at the, the radius for the moment. Okay, so there's my fully constrained shape. It starts at 10 millimeters high. It sweeps up, curves over at, uh, what is that, uh, 31 millimeters? Uh, in height and ends with a little round off there just to round off the, the end. Okay, let me just close that and we can see here we've got two shapes. Let me uh, put this where we can see them. I've got the shape here along the uh, bottom that just sweeps uh, smoothly. I've got the shape here that uh, is this OG shape that I want the blade to follow. The problem, of course, is that I want this OG shape to be mapped onto that curve. I want, I want to basically take this OG that's now going straight out, and I want it to curve around to the left there uh, like this. That's the complex path that I want this to follow. The way to do this is to create uh, what FreeCAD calls surfaces. Um, and a surface is an extrusion uh, of, uh, of uh, uh, infinitely small uh, uh, width or thickness. Uh, normally you could not extrude this. Uh, if I click on this and I try to extrude it uh, and I say OK, it's going to say the wire is not closed. The problem is that I'm trying to exclude some, uh, extrude something that doesn't make a complete closed shape. Part design won't let you extrude anything unless it's it's a closed shape. However, uh, the part workbench. Now, I know people don't always like these different workbenches. Um, something that you may or may not know is that you can actually take any of these tools and put them on a different workbench. So the workbench is simply a collection of tools uh, that work in a certain way. Um, if you want to create your own workbench that has the tools from part and from part design and from, you know, sketcher and surface and anything else, you can do it. Um, so uh, you can actually uh, assemble uh, these tools anywhere you want. I'm used to them being in these different places, so uh, that's how I use it. So I want to take my first sketch and I'm going to extrude it and I'm going to give it a... a Oh, 100 millimeters is more than enough, uh, and this is going to create a a infinitely thin surface. This is just a surface. There's no actual substance to this. This is just the surface extruded along that uh, sketch. I'm going to do the same thing with my second sketch. I'm going to do a rotate, and that is going to create a infinitely thin uh, surface that uh, is rotated using that shape. You can see now what I'm really after, what I want to get, uh, is the intersection between these two. I want, I want the path that this follows as it goes along that curved shape. The way to get that is to uh, select my extrusion and select my revolve and do a cut. And there we go. My cut now shows the uh, place where the uh, infinitely thin uh, re uh, revolution uh, intersected here with my infinitely thin uh, sheet. So I'm going to take the cut. I'm going to move it into my part. Um, it does seem to matter whether or not you do that. Uh, I don't know why. There are some these little odds and ends that FreeCAD you know, FreeCAD advertises itself as a work in progress, not as a final product. 
Uh, and there's an example of a, a place where it does seem to matter. Uh, so you've got to put the cut into uh, the uh, part. So I've got my cut. Uh, what I want is not the cut, but I want just this line, this intersection line. I'm going to select that. So I'm highlighting it, clicking with my control key down to be able to click more than one part. And there's my last piece. Okay, I've got the line. Could I just extrude along that line? The answer is no, because that line isn't in the body. I need to have that in a body uh, if I want to extrude this. Uh, maybe I could do it using the part workbench. I don't know. I haven't tried. Uh, but I want to do this in part design uh, as part of my working body. So here's my working body. There's the shape I want. I need to get that shape, that, that complex shape, I need to get it into my body. How can I do that? The way you do it is, I've got my shape selected. The body is the active body. Notice that it's bold. I click on the shape binder. I'll be honest, I don't fully understand all of what a shape binder is or what it does, but you'll see what it what it what it achieved. It has it has captured the shape for me and put it in the active body. Now I can hide my cut. And there it is. That's the path that I'm looking for. Uh, if you want to stop here, uh, you may that may be as much as you want to know, but uh, I'll go ahead and uh, do a little bit more here so you can see how this would work out. Now in my body, I can create a new sketch that I want to uh, take along this path. So I'm going to, uh, well, let me just do a simple one first. I'll just create a little circle. Uh, so here's a circle. I'm going to put it at the same level as the starting place. Uh, that is not actually absolutely necessary, but I'm going to do it just for the sake of convenience. Um, let's make that, I don't know, uh, four millimeters. Okay, so I've got a little circle. You'll see it there. There's the circle. There's this 3D path that I want it to follow. Okay. The command that we're looking for in FreeCAD is called the the pipe command, the additive pipe. Uh, that's a bit confusing, maybe. Um, uh, you know, you, some people might call that an extrude along a path or a sweep along a path. You'll see there that that's what it says. It's sweeping a selected sketch along a path. So I'm going to take my sketch. I'm going to click on my shape and I'm going to tell it to sweep along that path. And there we go. You see that it swept that circle along that path, including the downturn at the end. So that's giving me a nice, nice smooth shape uh, all through that 3D shape. Uh, you'll see a little bit of jaggedness there. That's an artifact of the, uh, of the, uh, that, that's how finely my mesh is set. Uh, put it in those terms. Uh, you could, as I understand it, you could make that finer. Um, I haven't messed with it uh, to worry about. Okay, so that gives me this, this complex shape. That's one way to do it. Let me delete that. I want to do something a little different. Uh, instead of a, just a circle, I want uh, an arc. i uh, sorry, I want a blade. I want something that represents my blade. So I'm going to uh, make a sketch here. I'm going to start it down here. I'm going to end it up here with a curve to represent the top of the blade. Bring it back down and finish it off. Now, of course, I need to fix some of these things here. So I'm going to make that horizontal, make this vertical. I want this blade to be centered on the axis. To do that, I'm clicking two of the points and the uh, vertical uh, axis and making it symmetrical. So now it's symmetrical. The width is my blade width. So let me put that in. I have it actually as blade thickness. Okay, two and a half. I want the top, this curved top, 
to start right here again there's some flexibility and you don't have to necessarily match it exactly but I find it helps to do that so how do I get the very tippy top of this curve to that uh, 10 millimeter starting point I can't just go from here to here um, because that's not the tippy top of the t of the arc unless I wanted to do some math. I could do that. I could go from here to here and add in the uh, radius. Uh, the, another way to do this, uh, which I would tend to do, is to use a construction line. That's one of the things that I've uh, changed and grown, I guess is the word. Uh, as I've used FreeCAD more, I've come to, to learn how valuable the construction lines are. Uh, that can solve some uh, issues and make it so much easier to do some things. So uh, a construction line is basically a line that constrains the geometry, but it doesn't actually, it's not actually included in the actual sketch. Okay, so I'm going to make a construction line that starts on this arc. So notice that you see the constraint there showing up uh, that, that has the... Uh, It shows me that it's a point on the, the, on the line. I'm going to do the same thing, bring it down here until I get that same symbol. There we go. So now I've got a construction line that is constrained to the arc there. I can't bring it below that. It's constrained. Okay, you see the point. Of course, I need this to be in the middle, and I could do that a couple of ways, but the easiest is to tell it that I want this... Uh, the center point of my arc to be on this line. So I do that, boom, there we go. So now I've got a line that goes from the very top of the arc down to the origin. If I set that distance and set that to my uh, initial height, blade inner height. Okay, there we go. I want my overall length, so I want it to go from here down to the bottom. I want this to be uh, my total blade height, uh, which is the same as my blade inner height. So SS blade, I'm sorry, blade outer height. Outer height. Okay, so there's my 31 millimeter blade. Uh, there's the cross section of the blade, two, two and a half millimeters wide, um, and at the moment, 10 millimeters of it is sticking up. Okay, that's what I want to sweep along this complex curve. So let's see if we can do it. Um, where did my sketch go? Okay, uh, I need to make sure my sketch is visible. It doesn't actually have to be visible, but it's easier for me, so I clicked it, pressed the space bar, and select also the shape that I want it to sweep, and let's tell it to sweep that shape. Now, that does not look right. What's going on here? In its normal mode, its standard mode, uh, FreeCAD does something actually pretty clever. It takes this shape, this sketch that we had, and it, as it moves along this path, it tries to keep this oriented to that, to that shape uh, so that it's in the same kind of vertical orientation. So as it sweeps up this curve, what's happening is this this is getting angled out this way more and more and more and that's what we're seeing here. We're seeing the, the angling of this shape coming up through there. Clearly that's not what we want though. We don't want all that and it's the same thing is happening when it angles down it's sweeping up again. So what we want to do is change this from the standard orientation to a fixed orientation. So orientation means the orientation of the sketch to the shape, we want it to be fixed. We want it to stay upright. And so now it's sweeping along. It's upright. That looks like it's about what we want. It's not exactly right, but I'm going to go ahead and say, okay, let's take a closer look at it. If I look at it from the top, you can see that there, there's something a bit odd about it. It appears to be thicker here and narrower as it gets to the front. Also, as it gets to the front, it's this kind of a sharp, jagged 
edge there. Uh, if we look at it from the front, we maybe can tell what's going on here. See our front face? Our front face is the same as this uh, back face, uh, and it's in the exact same uh, orientation as the back face. Um, we started out with it angled this way, and we're ending with it in, in that same angle, even though over the curve, uh, this angle and this angle, that uh, we need it to be this angle. We need it to be angled in the shape or in the orientation of the blade, or at least that's what I want it to do. FreeCAD can do that. The way to do that is to add a, an additional sketch to that sweep. Um, uh, so I'm going to do a shortcut here. I'm going to take the sketch that we used. So let me highlight it. You can see there's the sketch we used. And I'm going to copy it. I don't want it to repeat. If I leave those checked, it'll it'll give me a double copy of everything. I don't want that. I want it just to give me just the sketch. And then I'm going to paste it. For reasons unknown, it will paste it outside of the tree. So I've got to grab this and bring it up into my body. Okay, so there I've got the sketch, the original sketch, and the new sketch, which is a copy of it. What I want to do is m move where that sketch is positioned. That's called the attachment point. So if I've clicked on that sketch, I can click on attachment. You might think placement, but that's not it. It's, it's the attachment. Uh, so I need to change the angle and the position. The angle it's angled this way, but I need it to angle this way to match the end there. I've done some calculations. I won't bore you with all that, but I've done some calculations to find out that the angle uh, is roughly 62 degrees. And I did a calculation in my spreadsheet uh, to come up with that, and that's my blade final angle. Now, when I do this, it's not going to look right. Um, hit enter and I'll recalculate and you'll see um, uh, that does not look right at all what's going on what's going on this is a place where FreeCAD doesn't do what I wish it would do um, or I wish it at least would give you the option it the attachment uh, any of these attachment issues the attachment is relative to the sketch so from this perspective of the sketch, we were looking down on the sketch this way, and it rotated it along the Z axis, which it considers to be this axis, uh, as if we were looking down from the top. That's not what we want. It turns out that what we want is not the Z axis, but the Y axis. And I know that really just from experimentation. These numbers here uh, basically are percentages uh, of how you want to apply this rotation to each of the axes. So I want it to be 100% on the Y axis. So now if we look down, it's a little bit hard to tell, but if I close in, now you can see here's the original sketch at this angle. Here's the, the reoriented sketch now at this uh, angle that matches the angle at the end of the blade. So we're a lot closer. That's that's closer to where we want. I also know that I need to move it in terms of the X distance uh, and the Y distance, but again remember this is going to be relative to the sketch. So from the sketch's perspective this is the Z distance this way. Uh, when I did the calculations I called it uh, X and Y, but in fact uh, it's going to be uh, uh, X is going to be Z, uh, if I remember right, and it's going to be negative. Uh, this is going down instead of up, so uh, relative to the sketch, again, relative to the sketch. So this is going to be a minus, uh, well, first I need to hit equals, there we go, minus SS blade final X. So let's see if that worked right. I'm going to hit recalculate. All right, looks like that's about the right distance that way. I also need to move it this way, and that is in the Y dimension as far as the 
sketch, no, I beg your pardon, I believe that's the X uh, dimension as far as the sketch is concerned, but I called it Y. Uh, so, yeah, uh, my, my uh, spreadsheet names need to be updated here. Uh, and again, it's a negative direction. Uh, blade final Y. And there we go. So now you can see that the sketch, I've got a sketch that matches this sketch, but it's angled to match the blade. And it's positioned at the end of the blade, except that it's lower down than it needs to be. I need it to, I don't know if you have to, I think you could do it this way and it would still work okay because it would follow the curve of the shape binder. But I'm going to go ahead and move it up. And I need to move it up by the difference between uh, the uh, the thought, the total height of the blade um, and the height of the inner part of the blade because I, I started out with it positioned at the, at the height of the inner part of the blade. You could probably do the whole sketch with it set without doing that. I'm not sure. I've not tried to do the whole sweep that way, but um, I know it works this way, so uh, this is the way I'm. Uh, this is the way I'm going to do it. Okay, so move it up, and there we go. Okay, so we've got our sketch now at the end. What I want to do is go back to my what again FreeCAD calls this an additive pipe. I want to go back to this, and I want to tell it that instead of a constant transform. I want it to do a multi-section transform. This is going to let me add in another sketch that shows FreeCAD what it should look like at some point along the way. So I add this section, click on it, say OK, and now look at the difference. Now it's a constant thickness all the way through. It doesn't have that sharp edge. It ends uh, perpendicular to the to the curve. Um, that's what I was looking for. Now I'm going to stop this video here. Um, we could obviously keep going. This this is only the first step of making a, an impeller. I would still need to you know cut off the excess bottom part of this. This this has this extra part at the bottom that um, would need to be trimmed. Uh, I, for my purposes, would want to round these edges, uh, make a nice smooth uh, fillet there. Uh, and you could do that. Uh, you could try the fillet tool. Um, again, sometimes uh, FreeCAD is not uh, as uh, one of the places where FreeCAD is definitely a work in progress is that it's, uh, it, it doesn't always uh, do fillets uh, the way that you might want them to. I'll, I'll try it and see what happens here, but I, I won't be surprised if it yeah, it's not wanting to fill it. Um, so there's another way to do it, and that is I could uh, just do a sketch to take that curve and extrude it up, and that'll give me the fillet. Um, and that's what I actually did in, in uh, my actual version of this. So, okay, uh, there's still some things to do, but take this shape, rotate it around to get eight blades or however many blades I want. I've got that set in my spreadsheet. Uh, cut off the bottom, filleted it, and we get that. Okay, and you can see, I have to cut off that bottom piece. There's my new one that I just made, uh, but you get the idea how we went from that to that. Hope that's helpful, um, and if it's not, if there's any questions, I'm certainly happy to try to answer them.